Let's be real. No one actually wants to live paycheck to paycheck, but they also don't want to stop the habits that are keeping them in that vicious cycle. When it comes to your money, the last thing you want to do is waste it. Being fully aware of what bad habits are making or keeping you broke and then working to fix them can help you better manage the money you do have. In this episode, I'm sharing seven bad habits keeping you broke so you can work to fix them. Remember, when you know better, you can do better. So the first bad habit that keeps most people broke is thinking you don't need a budget. Newsflash, everyone needs a budget. I know I probably sound like a broken record on this podcast because any opportunity I get to promote having a budget, I'm going to take. But this is something that could actually be keeping you broke, thinking you don't need a budget. Regardless of how much or how little money you think you make, you need a budget. And contrary to popular belief, a budget is not a form of evil that means you can't spend a dime or enjoy your life. A budget is simply a way for you to keep track of what's coming in and going out over the course of time. So if you constantly tell yourself that you don't need a budget or you don't make enough to budget, or you make too much to budget, or you keep your numbers in your head, or any other excuse that is out there, that habit and mindset is keeping you broke. We all need a budget. And if you don't know where to start, let me help. I have a free monthly budget overview tracker that you can literally download and get a great starting point for your budget just in front of you. I will link to that in the show notes. I also have a service where I actually create custom budget plans for my clients. So they give me the specifics of their income, expenses, debts, goals, all of the things that would be needed for a budget. I take that information and create a realistic plan for them to follow so that they can reach whatever goals they have. I'll also link to that in the show notes if you want to kind of skip the step of trying it yourself and actually get a plan that will work for you, um, that option will be available to you. But if you take anything away from this episode, from any of the bad habits that I'm going to share that are keeping you broke, I want it to be this. You absolutely need a budget to be successful with your money. So the habit that could be keeping you broke the the most is thinking you don't need a budget and not having a budget. So if you think you don't need a budget, you do. If you know you need a budget but you don't have one, do something about it. Bridge that gap. Get yourself on a budget so that you can start making your money work better for you. Okay, I'm off my soapbox. (laughs) Moving on to the next habit that could be keeping you broke is buying into social media. And I know this is big. Social media has got me too, right? We've all been there where we're scrolling and we see something that is targeted to us and our personalities and our wants and our desires and our needs. And we click buy now and we put in our information. We just, you know, do the face recognition and our um, credit card data pops in and voila, we've purchased something that maybe we don't need. I've been there. We've all been there. And, you know, not only does social media make it easier to spend money with, you know, access to um, our information via the phone and our, our wants through ads and things like that, social media also gives us insight into what someone else is doing anytime and anywhere. So we can see our favorite celebs are vacationing in Aspen. We can see insta famous bloggers and influencers buying new cars we can see fashion gurus rocking new shoes and while all of this is fascinating it can make you question your own life or it could give you feelings of envy or i want that too so let me spend my money and and have that It's so easy to want to compare or compete with what you see on social media, but it's useless. People are only showing you what they want you to see. So if you are going to 
buy that latest Gucci bag, when you already have credit card debt, you are only hurting yourself. That purchase probably doesn't even make you feel that great either, right? Maybe in the moment that spending high feels amazing, but when you come off that high, it sure don't feel good. And yes, I'm speaking from experience. So buying into social media and letting that influence your spending and essentially spend money you truly can't afford or don't have um, can make you go broke very fast. So instead, I want you to purge your social media, follow people that inspire you to live a better life or grow in your career, your business, your finances, your relationships, follow accounts that um, motivate and empower and inspire and unfollow anyone that doesn't inspire you that makes you feel envious or makes you question your own successes in life mute them if you don't want to unfollow them but the point is to get those things um, out of your line of sight especially if they're bringing negative feelings to you why put yourself in a position to feel bad and I, I think this is something that over the years I've gotten a lot better at managing. I want you to check out episode 31, how I combat the competition mindset for some things that work for me. I'll make sure to link to it in the show notes, but we all have to be mindful of what we're consuming on social media and how it's making us feel and what it's making us do. And once we have that awareness, we can make sure that we're doing things we're supposed to that are actually benefiting our life and situation. The next habit that could be keeping you broke is using credit like cash. Oh my gosh, the sense of false security you get with an available credit line is frightening. And yes, once again, I'm speaking from experience. It may feel so good to know that you have $20,000 of available credit, but that is money that if you use, you have to pay back. So you don't really have that that cash. <laughs> it's credit and using credit like cash can be very detrimental to your finances. Um, available credit, just having credit cards, having credit lines really does make a person feel like they have more money than they actually do. And I think a very good thing for us to realize is that credit is not cash because credit comes at a cost. That cost is interest and it is expensive. Americans credit card debt has hit above $1 trillion just last year. So we are trending in the wrong direction and it is costing millions and billions of dollars in interest as a collective, right? But even as an individual, go look at your credit card statements, look at your most recent statements, see how much interest you were charged. That alone should be a wake up call to stop using credit like cash. And I will say this, uh, you know, credit cards can come in handy, right? There's no denying that available credit can really come in handy, especially in times of need, but it is risky business. So if you are not in control of your thoughts, your actions, um, your emotions, you could kind of get yourself into a little bit of trouble. Using credit like cash, you know, you, it just, it's so much easier for you to spend when you think of your credit card as a form of money that you actually have. Your credit card and using that available credit is not the same as using a debit card and only having access to what's in your bank account. Now, instead of using credit like cash or instead of using credit cards at all, I want you to focus on building up a short-term emergency fund. Get $500, $1,000, $1,500, an amount that feels good to you, Get that saved up and put to the side and use that savings account anytime an unexpected expense pops up. Don't use your credit card. Use the money that you have reserved for emergencies or unexpected expenses. This will help you start to avoid using credit cards to help bail you out. Another thing you can do is to leave the credit cards at home. Stop using them altogether. The rewards and the points you may get from them only benefit you if you actually pay the card in full every month and you're not being charged interest. So if you're doing that and you have you know, everything under control, everything's within budget, 
please continue business as usual because you are getting the most bang for your buck that way. But just make sure you're proceeding with caution. Make sure you have a savings account if something unexpected comes up because the minute you overspend, and yes, it literally just takes a minute, you could end up paying hundreds of dollars in interest and it's just not worth it. The next habit that could be keeping you broke is impulse or emotional spending. And I'm going to break down both of them. Emotional spending means your emotions trigger you to spend money. So does a bad breakup send you to get a total hair and wardrobe makeover? If you had a long day at work, do you treat yourself to a new bag to justify your feelings of having a hard day? If you're happy, sad, stressed, tired, annoyed, excited, do you head straight to the mall or go straight to the Amazon app? Emotional spending doesn't leverage logic because it leverages emotions. You are letting your emotions dictate when you spend instead of thinking through your purchases. So you're basically letting your feelings dictate what you do with your money. You have to work to take your emotions out of the equation when you are looking to spend money or find other ways of dealing with those emotions. So I'm not saying don't have emotions, right? But if your emotions are triggering you to, triggering you to spend and it's causing you um, financial angst, you have to find a better way of managing those emotions. Now, impulse spending is a little bit different. Impulse spending means you buy things on a whim. Okay, so you don't necessarily have emotions dictating your purchases, uh, but you definitely don't have logic playing a factor either. Maybe a flash sale triggers you to spend when you normally wouldn't. Maybe your favorite store sends you an email newsletter and um, it includes items you might like and your impulsive nature says, okay, I'm buying this. There are plenty of tactics that retailers use to make you, me, society spend money, especially on impulse. So I want you to fight the urge to impulse spend by walking out of the store, by closing the web browser, by turning off your phone, right? Put yourself in a position to succeed. And once you're out of the store, once you've closed the web browser, once you've turned off your phone, ask yourself if you really need the purchase. So this is going to take some practice. It's definitely going to take some um, intention and being conscious and aware of what you're doing. But if you can start getting to a point where before you actually make that impulse purchase, you ask yourself if you need the item, that's huge. And eventually if you can say, no, I don't need this and you keep, keep walking or you don't end up making that purchase, that is the goal. And once again, I'm speaking from experience here. I used to have such a strong desire to spend money on material things. And um, there was definitely emotion in that, but there was also impulse in that, you know, seeing a cute top and just going for it. Um, it, it cost me a lot of money and a lot of debt and a lot of time to pay that debt off. So um, I am speaking from experience here when I'm saying learn to curb your impulse spending, learn to manage your emotions so you're not spending money you shouldn't be. I share how I curbed the desire to spend in episode six. I am going to link to it in the show notes because I think it'll provide a lot of great context for you. All right, the next habit that could be keeping you broke is ignoring your debt. And you may be listening this to this and think, who does that? Um, or you may be listening to this and think, oh my gosh, that's me. I promise you, if you ignore your debt, if you pretend it doesn't exist, if you don't look at your bank statements, if you you know don't open those emails that say your monthly bill is here, it is causing more damage than you think. Okay, and it's more common than you think. You're not alone if you do that. Let me just say that. But pretending as if your debt doesn't exist because it's too scary or too stressful to deal with is not going to make it go away. I wish it would. That would be wonderful. But that's just not how it works. And more importantly, it's not going to get any cheaper. In fact, the longer you ignore your debt, the more it's going to cost your future self to get out of it. So ignoring your debt is costing you more and more money by the month, and that is money that you will likely have to pay back one way or another. So instead of ignoring your debt and pretending like it doesn't exist, 
I want you to tackle it head on. Accept that your debt is there because it is there. It is what it is. We're not going to beat ourselves up, but accept it and don't let it get you down. Create a plan to get yourself out of that debt as quickly as possible. And it starts with stop using the cards, right? So no more using your credit cards, okay? You will feel a thousand times better just having a plan in place, even if it may take years to implement that plan, you'll feel so much better knowing that you actually do have a plan, that you're in control, that you are facing the music, so to speak, and getting things taken care of. So stop ignoring your debt. It is a bad habit that is definitely keeping you broke. The next bad habit that could be keeping you broke is complaining about your current income. Okay, so hear me out. Complaining about the amount of money you make right now is not going to increase the amount of money you make right now, okay? In fact, complaining actually takes your mind off of how you can make more. So when you're so focused on the problem, you can't focus on the solution, okay? So stop complaining, stop the complaints in their tracks and think of how grateful you are first and foremost to actually have money coming in because imagine if you didn't, right? Like that would, that would be significantly worse. Um, so stop the complaints in their tracks, practice gratitude for what you gr- currently have, and then shift to solution mode. Start thinking about ways that you can bring in more money. Do you have a hobby that could be turned into a side hustle? Do you have friends or people who always come to you and say, oh my gosh, can you help me m- with my resume or can you do my makeup? Can you, you know, sew me this shirt, right? Like think about things that you already are good at that you can monetize. Um, Or can you get a second job? Can you do overtime at your current job? Depending on your situation and your current time restraints, you may be able to bring in a lot more income by just thinking outside the box. Okay. So if, if you take away anything from this episode outside of we all need a budget, this is another really good one because you can implement it instantly. You can decide right here and now that you are no longer going to complain about the money you make and instead you're going to focus on what you can do to make more money. If you don't like it, do something about it. You may remember in episode 35, Breaking Free of Broke Once and For All, I talked about shifting your mindset from one of scarcity to one of abundance. And it really all starts with gratitude and appreciating what you do have. I'll make sure to link to that episode in the show notes because it's a really good one. But stop the complaints right now. Stop whining about your current income and situation and start focusing on what you can do to change it. Okay, final habit that could be keeping you broke is failing to shop around. Now, failing to shop around means that you are a little close-minded. And I say that with love because I myself have struggled with this. Sometimes we get so fixated on a specific brand or a specific product or something very specific that we don't even do the research to see if there is something very similar that's a lot more affordable. Failing to shop around means that you aren't making the most of your spending. What if you could save five to 50% on the exact same item? just by browsing all of your options. And if you can't find that item anywhere else, um, what if you could likely buy it through like a cash back or rebate website and still get a little bit of money back, right? So there are ways to shop around that could leave you having the exact same item, the exact same brand, but saving a little bit more money in the process. So. When it comes to purchases, large or small, think through them, weigh all the options, and shopping around is just one of the ways you can maximize your spending to make sure that you're getting the most bang for your buck. And like I said, sometimes I'm guilty of this because I'm in a rush or like I just, I know exactly what it is that I want and where to get it. I don't want to do the research and it costs me money. So I'm telling, I'm telling myself like, hey, you know, take your time, do your research, Um, and, you know, give yourself time to really make sure you're getting the best price for your purchase. 
So there you have it, seven habits that are likely keeping you broke. And one thing about all of the habits that I shared today is they can all be broken. They are 100% in your control to break. You will see tremendous impacts to your money, to your budget, to your bank account balances by just making some small tweaks that I mentioned in today's episode. So let's break free of broke, let's get our proper habits in place, and let's start building our stable foundation because we deserve it.